see that lots of students are engaged in the process. Um, I think it's important, you know, as we mentioned earlier, that uh, it's important to recognize that this was close. You know, it's important to realize that um, this is a contentious issue on campus and we, we owe it to all students on campus to make sure that this is a, a feasible option, a feasible solution for all students on campus who come from a variety of different types of, um, I guess, commuting, commuting solutions. And, and one thing I've said in the past is that uh, we view the, view, the U-Pass not as, as a bus pass, but more of a, a commuting solution. There's students here who, who don't ride the bus, but uh, we are very confident that the U-Pass will be beneficial to, to those students as well. Yeah, that's, that's one reason. Uh, it frees out space in the parking lot. It gives students another option to get to campus to be able to develop um, a multimodal uh, way to get multimodal kind of transportation lifestyle. You know, you don't have to drive your car every day, you don't have to bus every day. Voting the U-Pass in isn't saying sell your car. It's saying here's another option um, to get to campus. If we look, the university recently uh, did a study on that. It's doing an ongoing study on parking on campus and it's showing that the University of Regina has one of the cheapest parking um, systems for students amongst universities of its size right now. And as, uh, you know, as they're doing the study, I, th I think they're, they're looking for ways to, to maybe match na national averages to look at places like Calgary where it costs $368 per semester to park as opposed to here where it's about $300, $320 for the year. So um, with the university already committing to a 4% increase on parking already, um, I think you're going to see parking go up. The, there, there's no more parking being put, the parking costs are going to go up, there's no more parking spots being put on campus and students are going to see those parking spots continue to decrease, rates go up, more students are coming to campus, uh, enrollment is up, it's continuing to go up, the university is expanding, you're going to see more buildings um, going on top of, of parking lots and students are going to feel the crunch on parking and be able to get to, being able to get to campus. What, um, I guess when negotiations uh, started, what are some of the challenges you see in negotiating with the city? I guess the, the price is, you sort of arrange 70 to 90, but what are some of the, the challenges that you see going forward? Um, some of the challenges is, I would see uh, negotiating continued increase in service for students. Uh, students are going to be a, now a large stakeholder in the transportation system. Uh, having a large amount of revenue coming from students towards the transit system and um, so we, we as students need to make sure that that is directly benefiting the students that are that are footing that bill. So um, negotiating with the city that the money that's coming from students is going into the transit that they're they're paying for. As I understand it now, uh, increased well, you can call it revenue. Um, there's not really any transit systems in Canada that make money. That's all public uh, or it's public service. But for instance, the last three years the. Um, Transit system has seen a 13% increase in ridership, but though that revenue revenue has uh, not gone back directly into the into the transit system, so you haven't seen improvements on the transit system based on that increased service, even though they're they've improved their cost recovery ratio. So we we'd like to see uh, the students be able to get direct uh, results from this this money that they're now putting into the system, and that. Uh, that doesn't go into just general coffers, general city coffers, that actually goes into improving service directly for students and that will in turn uh, improve service for the city. And, sorry, you, you, you referred to students as stakeholders now? Is that, that's kind of an interesting thing. Yeah, I mean, we, uh, if, if this deal goes through, so obviously we, we still have to do negotiations, but the students are going to be contributing a large amount of money to the Regina Transit system and they're going to be negotiating deals with the city. I don't know what the, it still is to be determined what the length of those those terms are and how often they're going to be renewed, but students definitely have a, a bargaining tool, a bargaining chip to be able to say to the city, look, this is the kind of uh, service that, that we like, let's let's see if we can make a deal. So I, I definitely think that we are huge shareholders. How huge is this considering that this referendum has come before students a couple times before and last time it was voted down by a majority? Were you surprised? Are you going to be proud of students? Is there like if you can kind of put it in the big picture um, I'm I'm really you're proud of students for, for being engaged and um, and as you see by the results, as we mentioned several times, it has been close. There has been students that have been researching both sides. So I'm I'm really uh, 
proud of our student body to be able to make an informed decision. I'm really proud of the, the volunteers that have been working so hard on, on this campaign. I mean, we had we had students, a team of 10 students, just going around for the past two weeks talking to, to class talk, or talking to classes five minutes in, before every class, uh, just trying to get everyone engaged and knowing what the details of this are and how it is going to affect our city. So, uh, in regards to your question about what this means for our city and how, why this is important, considering the fact that this has failed three times, this is um, this is a car driving city. Let's let's be let's be honest. But the fact that uh, I, I think that that well is going to run dry in the future, especially if. Um, we continue to see the, the growth that Regina and Saskatchewan are seeing right now. Um, you look at cities like, like Calgary, who have been a car-driven economy for, for many, many years, and they are paying costs. And right now, they're, they just approved a $50 million uh, transit project to deal with some of their infrastructure issues because the city was based around car use. So if we're able to uh, spend time and, and spend money create infrastructure right now, while we're seeing this this increase in our economy, more people keep coming to the city. I think that it'll do uh, a lot to create options for people in the future, save them a lot of money, um, allow the city to be uh, a lot easier to get around. And I, I think that's uh, it's really incredible that students have have a part of making that happen. Why do you think the vote swung this time? Do you think it was the, the new residents and lack of uh, surface parking space, or was it something else? Um, I, yeah, I think it was kind of the, the perfect storm. You had a lot of, like I mentioned, this is a car um, driving city. When you have suddenly 400 spots lost and the prospect of even more being lost, the, the students who voted against it last time, you know, this, this car driving student body, um, they're, they're staying up and taking notice now. And then you have the, the increase of 40, 48% over three years of the, the, um, the bus fees. So it's becoming increasingly more difficult for students to get to campus, not just one demographic, like a bus riding demographic, but for all students. So, and then we, we've uh, accommodated, we, we kind of learned from the last referendum as well, there was uh, a fair amount of students that were, were uh, upset with the fact that students who lived near the university weren't able to opt out. Um, so that was, that was a, a demographic that, that voted largely no, um, because they said we pay, pay a premium to live close to the university. Don't have to buy a car. Don't have to uh, take the bus. So, you know, why, why should we pay for it? So we, we made that uh, concession this time, putting the, the one kilometer radius into it. And uh, it's too bad they left. Necessarily, but what about the ride and share program? What's, what's the status of that? Is that still moving ahead? Um, yeah. Well, that's that's still in the, on the negotiation table. Yeah. Um, there's we have been discussing the the possibility with the um, university and the Regina Transit to make sure that that is, is a possibility for, for students because um, one, one, there's, there's studies that show that lifelong transit users often what they need is just to get on a bus once to become uh, familiar with it and then it becomes something that they're able to adopt. Uh, there's a lot of stigma around bus use. There's a lot of stigma that uh, a certain demographic is the only person, uh, demographic that uses the bus. So even if we can, through a, a parking ride, get students on a bus for two minutes a day, could, just taking a shuttle, I think that uh, that gives the idea to students like, oh, well, maybe I can use that to get downtown. Maybe I can use that to go, you know, pay some bills downtown or whatever. Right. So I, I think it, it does a lot in our, our city uh, to to use. Like I mentioned earlier, multimodal system of transportation, not just relying solely on one thing. We're not just you're not a cyclist, a bus driver, or a bus rider, a, a car user. You are someone who uses those methods of transport. So it's makes our city a better way to, to get around. Cool. Hey, thanks a lot. No problem. Anything you want to add? Ah. I'm relieved. <laughs>